So this is 6.2.1. We're gonna continue on with linear equations. So previously, we just did linear equations with one equation, well, for the most part. We're now gonna be doing systems of equations. Now, to be clear though, we did some systems of equations in the last chapter. The big race was a system of equations because we had multiple riders in the big race and we were able to create multiple equations, one for each person, and we were able to put all of the graphs of those different riders on the grid. Whenever you have two equations or more, same variables, brought together into a common scenario, that's a system. So we've been doing it, we just didn't call it that. So a system of equations is two or more, you have to have at least a pair, of equations with the exact same variables. So x's and y's, or m's and n's, or a's and b's, or p's and q's, or whatever. The big one though here is the solution. The solution are the points or single point where the graphs run into each other. So this is where they intersect. So see, we even talked about solutions to systems. I think in the big race, we even discussed who won the race based off of the race being 25 meters long, something around there. So we could see, we even talked about when two people were at the same point where they met in the race. That would actually be the solution to the system of those two equations. So that was where they were at the same place at the same time. Important to note, this is big. When we're talking about a solution, we are talking about points, which means our answers most of the time are actually gonna be written as a point like X comma Y. All right, well, I've got these three graphs at the bottom and I wanna take a look at what those graphs, like why did I even put them there? Well, when we're talking about a system of equations, we really have three scenarios that can happen. If we're talking about two lines, one, hands down the most popular, is that these two lines could intersect, so solution, in one spot. That's hands down the most popular. So I would have a line, any line, and then I would have another line. The solution is where those two lines run into each other. So that's my purple dot. The most popular situation is that you have one solution. So that's one thing that could happen. Now, this one solution, remember written as a point, every point that you and I have experienced so far is an X comma Y. So there's my solution. Well, let's see what else could happen. Oh, still two lines, so haven't changed that. But instead of having one solution, maybe we have no solutions at all. So I have a line and then another line. So what we have here is no solution because there's no point of intersection. And the only type of lines that have that relationship are parallel lines. So this is no solution. And just to clear it up, we know that the only lines that have no solution are parallel lines. Well, there's really only one other situation. Well, you can't have line, two lines that intersect twice. That, that would be that the lines would curl back and lines don't curl. Like people say, oh, it's a straight line. All lines are straight, folks, every single one. 
by definition, a line is straight. So this doesn't curl back. But this one looks a little tricky, because if you look at the graph of it, it only looks like one line. But what you have here is you have two lines where one of them looks like it's superimposed right on top of the other. So that the blue line and the orange line exist at the exact same locations. So with this situation, we have this infinite solutions. We're going to talk about what these look like, or at least one of them, algebraically today. Infinite solutions. And then we do say, so with no solution, we got the parallel business. With infinite solutions, these lines are called coincident. Basically, it means that they occur at the same time. They coincide with one another. So I would call these coincident lines. So that if you ever see that vocabulary, it does show up. That means that you have the lines, they occur at every single location in common. So that's basically the three scenarios we're talking about. Now, to be honest with you, really, the most popular one is the one solution, hands down, most popular. So as we go through and we start solving these algebraically, all right, so there's a couple ways to solve things. The way that you and I have been doing it last chapter was graphically. Think about the big race. We put multiple graphs on the same set of axes, and we figured out where some things ran into each other or who was further along in the race. That was using a graph. Today, you and I are going to use a different method to be able to do it. Algebraically, I mean, is no graph. We're just going to be dealing with the equations themselves. We're going to try to get the equations together. The method that you and I are going to focus on today is called substitution. Now, substitution can be done a couple of different ways. We're going to do the first one today. It's kind of like an entry-level way to do it. All right, so let's move on. Okay, here we go. I want you to inspect these equations. And by that, I want you to look at something very specific about both of these. And this is going to be true for every single equation or system you do today. Look at the first equation. You will notice that the y variable is isolated. What I mean by that is that the equation has y all by itself on one of the sides of the equal sign. Take a look at the second equation. It is also in the same format. The y is isolated. Well, if you have two things both equal to y, then they should be equal to each other because they both equal the same thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to identify the y in one of the equations. So I'm going to go ahead and box the y in the first equation. But if you take a look at the second equation, the second equation says y is 2x minus 1. So I'm going to box the 2x minus 1. What I'm going to do is I am going to take the 2x minus 1 from the second equation, and I am going to replace the y in the first equation. I'm going to plug it in. So that 2x minus 1 is going to get plugged in to that y. So I'm going to take the y out in the first equation, and I'm going to put a 2x minus 1 in its place. Then I'm going to continue writing the first equation with the x plus 2. Notice, all I did here
was I replaced, so I got rid of this y, and I put the 2x minus 1 into its location. So I swapped the red boxes. Now, how do I know if my substitution is successful? Look at your new equation. The 2x minus 1 equals x plus 2. You should only have one variable. You shouldn't have x's and y's. You should have x's or y's, not both. Okay, well, I feel good about this because it's only x's. I know how to solve this, so let's solve this. So I'm going to split at the equal sign. I personally prefer to have my x's on the left-hand side. So I'm going to take the x on the right-hand side and move it to the left. Well, it's positive, so I'm going to subtract. Now, just to be clear, so we don't want our variables to totally knock each other out. Remember that any single variable, if there's nothing in front of it, there's technically a 1. So I can put a little 1 in front of that x. All right, now let's combine like terms. So I have 2x minus 1x. Well, that's 1x. Drop down the minus 1. Drop down the equal sign. Well, if you take a look at this. My x minus x, that's 0. They cancel. And then drop the 2. Okay, x's are all on the left-hand side. Now let's start moving the numbers over. By that, I like to move the number that doesn't have a variable first because I already got the variables together. So don't just keep moving the variable back and forth. That's not going to do me any good. Let's get rid of that minus 1. Well, the opposite of minus 1 is going to be plus 1. Whatever we do to one side, got to do to the other. Drop down the 1x. Now, negative 1 plus 1, that's 0. That's what I wanted. Drop my equal sign, and then 2 plus 1 gives me 3. Now, we know that if you have a 1 in front of a variable, you technically just drop the 1. But it's not always going to be 1. So I want to go through the process of, well, what would it be? If, what would I do if it was something else? Well. The 1 is stuck to the x. We know that stuck to is multiplication. So I would divide both sides by whatever that number is. I know that 1 divided by 1 is just 1. So on the left-hand side, I have x. On the right-hand side, I've got 3. So 3 divided by 1 is 3. But I'm not, I'm not done. I am looking for the solution to a system. If we go back to the previous slide, we know that the solution to a system is the point or points of intersection. A point is an x, y. I think we still need the other half of the answer. So at this juncture, we are going to plug this into one of the original equations. It doesn't matter which one you choose. So plug it into one of the original equations. That's before we put them together. And in this case, we need to find, well, the other one, which is y. So go back to the original equations. So we choose an equation. Doesn't matter which one it is. Write it down. And then just be careful here. We solved for x. So we're going to plug it in for x. So we'll get y equals 2. Okay, the 2 and the x are right up against each other. So you're probably going to want to use parentheses to plug this in. We got 3 for x. And then don't forget to drop down that minus 1 as well. Follow order of operations. We know 2 times 3 is 6, drop the minus 1, and I know that 6 minus 1 is 5. I'm still not done. I'm really close, though. The solution to a system is a point. 
you got to write it as a point. So the solution, as we know, a point is always x comma y. So put the x value first. First, well, we got a 3. Put the y value second. We got a 5. This is our answer. Ultimately, what this says is that if I were to graph it, I'm not going to, but if I did, those two lines would intersect at the point 3, 5. Okay? So just so we know, this is the point. Where these two graphs or where the given graphs, or the graphs of the given equations, there we go, intersect, or where they hit each other. So that's what that means. So we are going to have situations where we're going to want to graph and see what happens. But we've kind of been practicing that already. Now we just want to focus on the algebraic method of it, it substitution specifically. Well, let's move on to another example. I want you to do the same thing. Inspect the equations. Really, the big thing I want you to focus on for today and actually next class is noticing that in at least one of the equations, a variable is isolated. Isolated meaning it's by itself. No numbers around it, no other variables, it's just hanging out all alone. If you take a look at this, the first equation is y equals. The y is isolated. For the assignment that you're going to be doing today, both of the equations are going to have the same letter or variable isolated. So the second equation is also y equals. Well, we're going to follow the exact same process. I notice that the first equation is a y, and I'm going to find what y is equal to in the second equation, and I'm going to plug it in. So I'm going to take out the boxed red y, and I'm going to replace it with x plus 2. Then I'm going to continue writing the equation. So I took what y was equal to from the second equation and plugged it into the first. Do a quick check. Notice that the only variable is x. This is good. And let's go ahead and solve this thing. Now, just because I move my x's to the left-hand side doesn't mean you have to. I don't even know why I do that. I think it goes back to from when I was in school and my teacher showed me how to do this stuff. They automatically liked putting stuff on the left, so I was like, okay. So that's what I do. So I'm going to move my 2x. It's a negative, so I'm going to make it a positive. Combine like terms straight down. Drop the 2 and the equal sign and the 11. Notice that my negative 2x and plus 2x disappear. This is good. Move the number that's either being added or subtracted on the same side as the x. In that case, that's the 2, and I need to undo it, so I'm going to subtract. Drop the 3x, positive 2 minus 2 goes away, it's what I planned, and 11 minus 2 is 9. I'll keep going. We want to get x by itself, so i got to get rid of the 3. It is multiplication, so to get rid of it, I'm going to divide. I know that negative 3, excuse me, wow, where'd that negative sign come from? Positive 3 divided by positive 3 is just 1, so I get x equals, and then 9 divided by 3 is 3. And it looks like I have the first part of my answer, but I'm not done. 
Remember, you get an x and a y. So we choose an equation. So y equals 11 minus 2x. Just be careful. You solved for x, so make sure you plug in x. All right, so that gives me y equals 11 minus 2. The x is stuck right next to it. I'm going to need some parentheses here. And I'm going to go ahead and plug in the 3. Follow order of operations. It's going to give me 11 minus 6. And 11 minus 6 is 5. Again, not done yet. Got to write it as a point. So our solution... x first, then y. Well, the x we got was 3, the y we got is 5. Now, notice, this is the exact same answer as the previous question. And yet, the equations are not the exact same equations. I chose to do this because I wanted you to see that we could have two different equations and their point of intersection could be the same. That can happen. Okay, moving on. Question number three. Look very carefully. Remember what I said. For all of the problems that you're doing today, the same variable is isolated in each of the equations. So I go through Still do that red box business that we did on the previous ones. But interesting thing to note, if the x is isolated in both of the equations, then your new equation, when you put them together, is not going to have any x's in it. So in this case, I think the first thing you're going to solve for is y. And that's okay. It doesn't matter which one you solve for first. You just got to make sure that you have answers for both of them. Okay, so we're going to put 2y plus 2 substituted in for the red boxed x. And then we're just going to keep writing the top equation, 5 minus y. Why don't you guys go ahead and solve this? And then let's see what we get for y. All right, I got y equals 1. Same process. Go back. Choose whichever equation makes you the happiest or least miserable, however you want to look at it. I think I'm going to choose the first one. Not that it matters, though. You get the same answer. So I'm going to go back, and I chose x equals 5 minus y. Remember what I said. Be careful. You solved for y. Make sure you plug it into the y location. So let's take that out. And we're going to plug the 1 in there. Uh, there's nothing stuck to it, so I don't think I need parentheses this time. 5 minus 1 gives me 4. All right, there's x. Remember, you need to write it as a point. So I guess my question is, is the answer 1 comma 4 or is the answer 4 comma 1? So following what we know, x is always first, y is always second. Again, doesn't matter if you solved for x or y first. Okay, last problem for today before you guys can get to work on your assignment. I want to talk about, or at least look at, 
well, what do the weird ones look like? What does the no solution look like? Or what does the infinite solutions look like? So let's take a look at question number four. You'll notice the setup is exactly the same. It hasn't changed. The first equation, the x is isolated. Perfect. Following the same process, you'll notice also that the x is isolated in the second equation. So I'm going to go through and do what I've been doing. <laughs> So take the x out of the first equation and replace it with the 4 minus 2y from the second equation. So I'm going to get 4 minus 2y, replacing that, and then continuing on to write the rest of the equation, 6 minus 2y. Perfect setup. Look at the equation. I only have y's now. This is good. And then I'm going to go through the process of shuffling my y's around. Well, you know I'm going to move the 2y from the right to the left. So let's do that. Drop the 4 straight down. Negative 2y plus 2y, that disappears. Drop the equal sign. Drop the 6. Well, the negative 2y plus 2y also disappears. Definitely have an interesting situation here. I have 4 equals 6. That's strange. What we have here, you'll notice this is very different than the previous questions. In the previous questions, we got y equals something or x equals something. You'll notice that the variables, all the letters are gone. You kind of get that heightened awareness of, well, I sense trouble. So we have to ask ourselves a question. And it only happens when the variables disappear. So since all the variables are gone, Ask yourself if this is a true or false statement. Because that dictates what we would write for the answer. So, if it's true, then we would say that there are infinite solutions. Because it doesn't matter what you would have plugged in for y, you would have gotten like 2 equals 2, 5 equals 5, negative 7 equals negative 7. You would have gotten a true statement. So it doesn't matter what the x's and y's are. They're telling us that these graphs would have been identical to each other. That's if it's true. If it's false, it's kind of the flip side of that. It doesn't matter what you plug in. You're going to get a statement that doesn't make any sense. 2 equals 7. 1 equals 9. Negative 7 is equal to 0. If it's false, it doesn't matter what you do. Nothing is going to work. This is no solution. Those are your two options here. But we only consider these options when the variables are gone. If the variables are still in there, then we have an answer. So, go back. Take a look at it. Is it true or is it false? When we get a false statement, which is clearly what we have here, we got to go back to this 4 equals 6 business and fix it. We want to say 4 does not equal 6. So we're going to go up and put a slash through the equal sign. 4 does not equal 6. This is a false statement. Since this is false, 
my answer is going to be no solution. And let's think about what that means. Kind of going back to uh, the first slide. If we have two equations of lines and there is no solution, then we know that these graphs were parallel. So these are parallel lines. And I know we would have figured that out had we graphed them. Yes, that's what we've been doing. We've been practicing graphing. At least one of the things. Hey, that finishes up notes for today.